Real Agriculture's coverage of Agritechnica 2017 is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences Canada. Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture at Agrotechnica 2017. Our coverage brought to you by Dow AgroSciences, and uh, we are joined now by Tom Simonson with uh, with Complex. And Tom, uh, a robot here, an example of a robot on display. When it comes to agriculture, this room certainly it looks like agriculture in five, ten, I don't know how many years might not look the same as what it does what it does today. No, I mean we 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 definitely believe that robots will be entering into the agricultural market uh, now or at least in the coming years but we have been working on these uh, agricultural robot projects now in a research different research projects for six seven years now since 2010 11 uh, and and now we think time is uh, about right to be sort of the time where we are supposed to have these robots being able to do work in agricultural fields okay um, this particular one is not really designed to be an agricultural robot. This one is supposed to be wor- working in, uh, for instance, golf clubs or uh, other uh, areas doing grass cutting or golf ball picking. But we have also been doing robots for line marking in uh, sports. And, and for some reason, I mean, it seems that, that in these applications, robots are coming faster for some reason. Uh, but, but still, we are here in Agri-Technica together with our uh, uh, a partner company here called Logotronic in order to to show that we believe that robots will also be entering into the agricultural area in the years to come. So we have grass cutting applications in agriculture. What are the other ones that uh, you see as as obvious or the first, the easy, the, the easiest step? Um, I think grass cutting for one, of course, but then something like weeding, uh, row crop crop uh, cleaning uh, is also an obvious application. Um, something like monitoring or surveying, it could be checking the uh, growth in plants. I mean, uh, these days when when uh, when the farms get bigger and bigger and, and the, actually the, the guys taking decisions on these farms uh, get less and less, you have to take a lot of decisions per day. And if you have to have a sort of a good knowledge of what is going on on your fields uh, having robots going there to uh, examine I mean like soil conditions uh, humidity that sort of thing could be interesting in a combination with drone data and perhaps satellite data so that's also one of the sort of interesting combinations that we that we foresee so how quickly does that happen how what, what's the time horizon for some of these ideas we're seeing a few Certainly more of these robots that can do these tasks at Agritechnica this year than two years ago. So there's been a fair bit of advancement in the last yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think the advance, advancements are coming fast now. I mean, uh, I think safety has been one of the most challenging things. Uh, but we have just completed a four-year research project into safety. Uh, so we know that if you want to really have these fully autonomous robots, then then safety will be the crucial, uh, sort of the key issue to solve. Um, I'm not saying we have solved it now. I think we, we know what the challenges are. That I think there are still legislation to be uh, sorted out uh, and there are still standards to be made. Uh, but, but, but we've come quite far over the last four years in that area. And, and we've just today or, or this, this year, we have demonstrated that we're actually able to uh, using different cameras and different uh, uh, algorithms, we can actually identify different obstacles in the field, and then we can ad- adopt the behavior of the robot depending on what kind of obstacle we see. So it might differ from, I mean, you might ha- want to have one behavior if what you see is a human being, and another behavior if what you see is a well-known static object or obstacle. So. So we have been working quite a lot into this uh, about standardization and, 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 and safety, really. So, so now I think it's about finding the right application for, for actually starting to push these robot tractors. Uh, and I think another thing which is actually very important in that perspective is that whereas traditional agricultural machines have just grown bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. Uh, we see you know, issues like soil compaction and, and that sort of thing. And I think there will be now a, a trend towards 
having um, minor machines or smaller machines working in like a swarm uh, or working in a collaborative way uh, so that you might achieve the same result with five smaller autonomous tractors uh, than you can do with one big one and then perhaps with even more redundancy uh, if one machine is for some reason uh, taken out of operation uh, you might still have 80 or 90 percent of your capacity left mm -hmm. so going forward then i'm going to list a few things and i'll let, maybe let you decide which one you think is the biggest obstacle so you mentioned government regulations and, and just the, the legal framework when it comes to safety um, what about uh, battery life, uh, that, that as a factor, uh, ease of use potentially, we see the iPhone take off because it's so user friendly, are we going to see that in, in drones, what do you see as kind of the, the obstacle to, to overcome that it's going to make these, there's lots of people here talking about the what the future will look like with, with small robots like this, what, uh, what gets us from today to what that looks like? I think it's it's most likely you know uh, software that can ease the use of it. So 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 to be able to work this as a collaborative uh, thing, so that one guy or, or one uh, operator is actually able to control more robots in a collaborative way. I think that's one thing. Another thing is the safety. I think really. Uh, so uh, because all the other things like you know, obviously you mentioned battery life. Of course, you know we will be helped by everything which is going on in the auto industry now with, with so 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 i suppose that 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 we will be helped by by the fact that also autonomous autonomous driving is coming in the auto industry and and electrical cars is coming so so i think that that all the issues you mentioned i mean are, are being sort of addressed at the moment now we just need to find um, the right size of, of, of tractor, the right equipment, and, and the, really the right application. And of course it will be helped by, I mean, if you have areas where you are to some extent a little bit uh, um, fenced in, or whatever, how should I put it, uh, uh, it, it might help you on, on, the, on, the, on the safety side, right? Because if you really want to achieve a benefit of, of, of autonomous uh, driving that that's really where you, you need the safety to be resolved but but let's say if you can find certain uh, applications where where you might al already be fenced in then I think it, it should be quite uh, not easily done but then I think it's, it's very close that that you can actually so can, can those fences be GPS you, signal yeah. fences or do they have to be physical buried wires and those yeah, sorts of well, things I think it, it might be a combination because geofencing is actually definitely also a way of solving it. So, and then might have dual GPSs, and if you and if you then connect them to a a, a, a control system with a, with a given safety level, I think you are, you're you're almost there. All right. Well, thanks for the conversation and enjoy the rest of Agrotechnica. Thank you so much. Cool.